So I've been a little MIA from the channel. That's because I've been moving. If you notice, the background is different. The angle is different. Let me know what you guys think of this setup and this angle. Do you like it or do you prefer it the old way where it was like straight on towards the toolbox? Let me know in the comments. But I'm back and got a whole bunch of content coming your way. Today, I want to talk about holding versus dialing and then some go fast cheat math. Now, that is a phrase that I stole from Alex at Ridgeline. We'll talk about that in a bit, but I'm going to owe him some whiskey because I stole that phrasing from him. One of the questions that I got a lot after our TAC Games videos was a lot of people wanted to know why were we dialing so much and not holding when we had Christmas tree reticles and we had optics that allowed us to do that. And the short answer is that it was just faster for us and more beneficial in that instance and in that time to do that, to, to hold versus dialing. Now, uh, I want to give a quick overview of the pros and cons of both, and then we will kind of get into some of these other options that you may have depending on the context of what and when you're shooting. So to start off with, let's talk about pros and cons of holding and dialing. Now, when it comes to dialing, it is obviously the slower of the two options because it requires you to come off the gun. It requires you to dial to these exact 0.1 mils or MOAs if you're using MOA, uh, but it, it requires you to come off and do that. And that's time. It's it, it, it may be a few seconds, but a few seconds add up over a stage, a few seconds add up in the real world if you were in a gunfight or whatever context or situation you're imagining. But there are some benefits to dialing. One, it removes some of the human error because you're not having to hold elevation and wind. So when we dial, it's easier for us to keep track of that center dot. And all we're really holding for is wind because all the arrows in the reticle are pointing us to the center spot. So it makes it easier for your eye to pick that up over and over again. As you get further down in the reticle, if you're trying to hold elevation and wind, you, you can get lost in it. So dialing for that center dot to be on target is very beneficial. Uh, but again, it is just slower if you're trying to move from, from varying target distances. But it is good because it makes it easier to track when you're trying to get fast follow-up shots repeatedly on the same target at the same distance. It's also great for confirming your, your data. So something that Taylor and I will do is oftentimes before matches or just frequently as the weather changes, as the environmentals change, we will confirm our dope and we do that by dialing. So as we go to our different yardages, we just confirm that the numbers coming out of our ballistic calculators are correct by dialing to those numbers and making sure that we're hitting where we're supposed to be. Because Lots of ammo can change, your environmentals can change, your barrel may have deteriorated and you may have lost some velocity out of it. So you may have to go back then and true your velocity again. So these are all things that can change over time. Nothing is static, nothing stays the same forever. So we frequently go back and just confirm data before we go to a match or, or whatever it is we're training for. Now, as we noted, it is obviously the slower of the two options, which brings us to holding. Now holding, the biggest benefit to holding, especially with these Christmas tree reticles, is that it's just much faster to get from target to target at varying distances or a moving target to be able to hold both elevation and dialing. Now, again, there are some cons to dialing and some we hit on those earlier, mainly that it's easy to get lost in your reticle. So as you get further down and say, for me, it's past the, the five mil. Once I hit five mils in my reticle and below, it's easier to get lost because you're trying to find, you're, you're having to go all the way down and find the spot in there and then find your wind. And Typically, when you're further down in the reticle, you're also having to go further over in wind because you're shooting at further distances. So for me, it's really easy to get lost there. And that's something I'm, I'm working on currently. However, it is faster because it allows you to stay on the gun and stay looking through the glass as you move from one target to the next. And if that is a mover that is moving at a diagonal, if it's moving closer or further away from you, and this could be in competition, it could be in, in real life. But as that target is moving away or towards you, it allows you to stay on target and make adjustments as necessary allows you to spot your trace, allows you to, to spot your wind calls if you're getting misses so that you can get your wind on at say 400 yards so that if your next target is at say 800 yards, you have a good idea of what that wind call is gonna be at 800. Now, another con with holding is that it's not quite as precise because we don't have 0.1 mil markers or hash marks in our reticles. And th that can be good and bad because it would make it more cluttered. But the simple way around that is just bracketing. You take your half mil mark or your mil mark, and then you bracket it with your, your other half mil or mil mark. And that will put you in between. So if you were looking at a 2.3 mil hold, you would take the two, put it at the top of your target, put the half mil hold and put it at the bottom of your target, depending on target size. And that would put your 2.3 right in the middle of that target. So that's a simple way to get around it. And you would just do that as necessary with, with varying targets. The other thing too is, is the quality of your reticle is also going to be play a big factor into how well you're able to hold because some reticles have thicker lines than others, which means it will take up more of the target than others. Some people prefer the really fine. Some people prefer the thick because it's easier for their eye to pick up. It will vary from shooter to shooter. The main thing is that you practice your gear and know what your holds are so that you can be efficient with it when you're on the clock. 
With dialing, it takes out some of that human error. With holding, it adds in a layer of human error. So it's one of those things that you're going to have to determine how good are my holds. It's one thing you're going to have to practice. That one of the things I'm working on. But it's really important to practice both and be good at both. Because at some point, you're going to have to dial because you will run out of reticle. So for me and my attacker, my reticle goes down to 10 mils. And once I get out to 900 yards, I'm hitting the 10 mil mark. So anything beyond that, I'm going to have to dial to accommodate to give me more room of error to hold further down. So I could dial 10 mils and then know that if I'm shooting beyond 900, it's that. Um, the great thing about the attackers, it has the two dots above it with the new reticle. So if I needed to hold under for, say, the target is moving closer, moving into that 800 yard range, I could do that. It will depend on the context of what you're doing and what you're shooting. will determine how much you're going to dial, how you're going to hold, what you're comfortable with doing. But at some point you will run out of reticle and you will have to dial. So it's important to practice both, important to be familiar with both and know how to apply as necessary for the given context. Which brings us back to the initial question, which was why were we dialing so much at the tag games versus holding? Now at that match, the time penalty for a miss was 30 seconds and there were no makeup shots. So if it took two to five seconds to dial, it was worth it to do that versus taking that 30 second penalty of being off on a hold a little bit here or there. That's why you saw us dial on basically every stage. Now, there are some stages where it would have been beneficial to hold versus dialing, and we, we'll talk about that at the end. But there's also some other options we have, to, again, depending on context. This is all context dependent on target size and target distance and how fast you're trying to shoot. So at the end of the day, we're all trying to shoot with speed and accuracy, no matter what type of shooting you're doing. That's the same thing across the board for every style of shooting. Speed and accuracy is what matters. How fast and how accurate we shoot is dependent on target size and target distance. So this is where the fun part comes in. This is some of the go fast cheat math that guys like Alex from Ridgeline have and Bruiser has. Um, Alex did say never do math in public, but I've never been accused of being a smart man. So here I am doing it for the whole internet uh, to look at. So the first one we're gonna talk about is max point blank. Now this comes directly from Ridgeline. This is their version of it. You can Google max point blank and you can find a whole bunch of videos on it but this is their version of it. I will link a video up here. Go watch Alex. There's more to it than, than what I'm showing here. If you want that more in depth on Max Point Blank, go take a class with Ridgeline. This is kind of like the intro to it of how they teach it. And then there's more on the back end of application that they get into in the class. What we've got here um, is six targets out to 600 yards. So each of these numbers will represent those uh, yardage distances. And this is all based off of a 12 inch target. So they base theirs off a 12 inch target. Some people will do it off a different size. Could be a 20 to 24 inch or whatever. Um, but for them and their, as Alex calls it, their doctrine, 600 yard, 12 inch target, um, which is essentially, in A zone. So A zone is 11 inches. So that gives you roughly an idea of how tall this target is would be the same width. So that's how much area we're playing with. All of the data that I've put in here is based off of my particular gun. This will vary for you in your particular gun in your setup because yours is going to change based on the data you're putting in. But for me, it's a 16 inch Noveski 154 scope mount. Uh, muzzle velocity is going to be 2692 and we're shooting 77 grain hollow point boat tail. Now the down and dirty with max point blank is that essentially what we want is to be able to aim center on a target and have that bullet hit the target all the way through as, as far as we can um, without having to adjust our aim up or down. So what Alex teaches, is he says, dial on one mil or roughly your 300 yard uh, data, or your 300 yard dope, and that will get you through. Now it does start to fall off different for everybody, uh, but this is just to get us going. So for me, if I were to dial on my one mil data, that puts me 3.6 inches high at 100, puts me 4.3 inches high at 200, it puts me 2.1 inches low at 300 and then 17.2 at 400 and that's where it starts to fall off. It only goes further down from there. So what this means is that on our 12 inch target that I can aim dead center out to 300 yards and make good impacts. Um, at 400, I'm gonna have to hold a little bit higher and then I'll have to do some math work to figure out for five and six. Now, as I mentioned earlier with the attacker reticle, one of the benefits we have is that with the newer one, we have two dots above your center dot. So one mil and two mil above. So if I were to dial on two mil for my particular gun, that would give me 7.2 inches high at 100, 11.5 high at 200, 8.6 high at 300, put me 2.9 low at 400, and then I start to fall off at 500. Now, this is where the reticle comes into play because if we look at what our mils are for how big this target appears in our reticle. So a 12 inch target will be 3.3 mils at 100 yards. It'll be 1.6 mils at 200 yards, 1.1 mil at 300 yards. And then it starts to drop down to 0 0.8, 0 0.6 and 0 0.5 respectively as we go out further. 
So I know that if I'm looking through my reticle and my target zone, that 12 inch target zone is less than two mils, I know that I need to be holding higher. If it's inside of that, if the target is, my 12 inch target is bigger than that one mil, then I can hold at that either one mil dot or the two mil dot, and that should put me on target at these. Because if I aim at the center point, it's gonna put me off target high, off target high, off target high, and then I'm on target. So you will have to get out for yourself and collect data on this and figure out what works, right? Like we can do the math, we can put the, the data into the Kestrel, we can go off of our hard card and figure out what that would look like, but at the end of the day, you've just gotta get out and, and figure that out on target to see what that realistically looks like. But if, if we can get out and we're working from anywhere from 100 to 300 or 100 to 400 yards and be point blank range, then that makes it a lot easier for us to get on target faster, um, especially if we have more generous targets in a competition, or for those of you who may be patrolling or, or whatever it is that you're doing. Um, again, just scenario dependent, context dependent. You can play with it and figure out what works for you. Uh, there are some, some instances where this is more beneficial. There are some instances where this is not. Now, as we look at this and we look at five to 600 yards, we do see where it starts to fall off the target and you're gonna have to figure out some data there. But a centrifuge says distance equals time. So we're looking at a 12 inch target at 600 yards. At 600 yards, that 12 inch target is a two MOA target. So how accurate are you at two MOA? So that may be an instance where once we know we're getting out to that distance where that 12 inch target is taking up half a mil in our reticle, it may be time to start dialing for us. And because we're so far out, we may have the time to do that because we have the distance. So keep that in mind. Uh, this is just one way, this is another just cheat code to go fast, all context dependent. Now, one of the other options we have is the, what Bruiser Industries calls flash milling. Now again, we're doing this out to 600 yards. Each of these targets will represent those yardage distances. The difference here is that Joe is basing his off of a 20 inch target. So for context, C zone on your target is a 23 and three quarter inch uh, size target. So roughly here is the size we have. Much more generous area to work with, um, but much more human sized. So a little, little more area to work with, essentially top of the head, basically to your belt line. With Joe's method, this is where these millings or being able to mill your target comes in much more handy. So that's another topic for another day, how to mill. You can go to YouTube and find videos on how to do that. But essentially this 20 inch target is going to appear as 5.5 mils at 100, 2.7 at 200, 1.8 at 300, 1.4 at 400, 1.1 at five, and 0.9 at 600 yards. And that's important for us because as you're looking through your reticle, we won't have time to get off gun, get a laser rangefinder, and figure out how far that target is. So being able to flash in the reticle and see what roughly the size of that target is, again, humanoid target, head to waist, um, will give you a, a size in mils, which then we can correlate to how far that is. Now, one, once we've milled our target and we have a rough idea of what the distance on that target is, we're going to apply what our gun number is. Now, this is where the math from Joe's side comes in. This is some work we gotta do on the front end so that we can do this on the back end. So the way we find our gun number is we take our, our dope for our different yardages. So we've got our one through 600 here. And this is my, these are my holds off of my hard card for each of these respective yardages. And what we're gonna do is we're gonna subtract the hold from the number. It, it, hang, hang in there with me, all right? Just track with me. From two, at 200, we'll subtract 0.4 is my hold from, we'll subtract 0.4 from two. At 300, we'll subtract 1.2 from three, we'll subtract 2.2 from four, 3.3 from five, 4.7 from six. And that will give us this number over here. And what we're gonna do is just kind of take an average. We're gonna look at that and go, okay, what is a good number that kind of covers all those? So if we look at mine, you see 1.6, 1.8, 1.8, 1.6, 1.3. .1 so I went with 1.7 as my gun number, right? So you're just kind of roughly guesstimating there. Um, so that, that covers a good variety of these, of this. I know that at 600, it'll be off a little bit, but we'll, we'll talk about that in a minute. Our gun number or my gun number in this instance is going to be 1.7. So what we'll do, how we apply this is we go through, we flash mill and we see that the target is 1.4 mils in our reticle. And that lets us know that target is at 400 yards, roughly 400 yards. So I'm going to subtract my gun number, which would be 1.7 from four and that'll give me a hold of 2.3. Now my actual data, 2.2. So I'm only 0.1 mil off on a 20 inch target. So a lot of leeway there, but I'll be on target there. It's just a quick way to do it. Again, this is all context dependent, right? Because we have an unknown distance. 
um, we have a humanoid sized target and we're trying to quickly get some good math. It's just a quick way to do the math, a quick way to, to get on target. But again, this is a much more generous sized target. And again, it is context dependent because we're shooting human sized targets versus shooting more precise targets. Um, and th there's different ways we could apply both these, but these are just two very fast, quick and easy ways you could do some math without having to get out your Kestrel, without having to get out your ballistic calculator, without having to get a, out a laser rangefinder and do all this very quickly on the clock. So let's look at a couple scenarios. So scenario one, and now this is an actual actual stage that Taylor and I shot at the TAC games. So we've got four shooting positions and we've got one eight inch target at 473 yards. Because we know target size, target distance, and, and it's roughly a one and a half to two MO8 target, we probably need to be a little more precise. So because of that, we it makes more sense for us to dial and just focus on moving stage to stage, building good positions, making a good wind call. That's the easiest way to do it. If this was a human sized target, like a D, D size steel or um, C zone size steel, something like Alex's max point blank would work really well here, or even bruisers. If we had an unknown target distance and we needed to find the target distance and then find what our hold was, that would be a good, good way to use uh, bruisers flash milling on this particular target. But one that doesn't really make sense here is holding. Holding doesn't make a whole lot of sense here because we're shooting a known target at a known distance. We're having to be a little more precise and we're only shooting that one target. So in the context of that, holding doesn't make sense there, dialing makes more sense. Scenario number two, again, this is a stage that Taylor and I ran at the TAC games. So we had one shooting position, we have targets out from one out to 700 yards in 100 yard increments, and we know these are 30 inch targets. And the course of fire for us was to fire one on one, one on two, back to one, three, back to one, four, back to one, five, back to one, six, back to one, seven, one, back to one. In that instance, it makes zero sense to dial because you're having to dial in between stages. Now we did dial and it did, in retrospect, it was a poor decision. Um, we could have saved a ton of time by doing that because one, the target was so generous and, and two, it just ate up so much time having to dial back and forth because as you get out here, you're dialing so much and having to get back on, not worth it. So in this instance, absolutely makes sense to hold because we're not gonna run out of reticle at 700 yards. Uh, my hold is 6.3, so I'm still well within the middle of the reticle. Just got to make a decent wind call because it's a very generous target. So um, that is an instance where holding absolutely makes way more sense than dialing. Now, again, in this equation, if we take out some of the known variables, like say we take out uh, known distances, something like bruiser's flash milling would work very, very well here because we can flash mill out to 600 and see based off of that target, how big that target is taking up in our reticle, how many mills, that gives us an idea. We subtract our gun number, we go very quickly. Now this is, you know, context is different. Um, so that would be like a real world situation, if you will. Um, another uh, option would be to use Alex's flash milling, right? We, we know that we'd be on at 400. We can kind of see what 400 looks like. He uses his exit rep ramp method. Again, watch that video and that'll make sense. But we know at 400, um, we're going to start to fall off there. So we probably need to hold a little bit higher. But keep in mind, we are also shooting much larger tar targets. So we can hold uh, above the target or ahead of the target and still be on at some of these distances. At 700, we'll probably have to be dialing there. But that just goes to show that there are different solutions to different problems. And there is no one size fits all for everything. It's really important for you to be well-rounded and well-versed in a variety of ways to solve problems. And one other one that I didn't mention there is something that Joe often talks about is it in, in his experience, there would be times where he's providing overwatch and the closest area that he can see, because, you know, from where he's at, the closest area he can see may be 270 yards. The furthest area that where there, a threat might appear might be 500 yards. So he's got to be responsible for that distance. And so for him, he may dial on to know that center of his dot is going to be for that closest target and what his hold has to be out to that furthest one. He may use flash milling. He may dial for what the center of those two, he may split the difference and just know that he's going to uh, be slightly off one way or another. So there's a variety of ways we can solve these problems, a variety of ways to go about doing it. Uh, but I wanted to share some of that here because I felt like there was some really good knowledge that some of you guys might find interesting. I know it was a lot of math, a lot of information there, but I hope hope you found that useful. Um, there, we'll be covering more SPR stuff. I'll be covering more stuff with Bruiser in the future and Alex later in the year when I get out to full spectrum SPR. Uh, again, if there's things that you guys want to see about SPRs or scope carbine, let me know. We'll try to make more videos on those things. Got a bunch more content coming, so stay tuned for that. Make sure you hit that like, subscribe, karate chop that bell so you get notified every time I upload a video, and I will see you guys in the next one.